Hi there, dear ones. I wanted to come and do a quick oracle reading for the first couple of weeks of March. I'm going to try to do a beginning of the month and a mid-month reading to sort of give you a taste of what oracle readings can feel like. I offer seven card oracle readings where we look at your soulful growth and soulful purpose at this time. What's your soul trying to say to you? And we do it with this incredible deck that I am so grateful for. This is the work of Samantha Orthley at Senses of the Soul, and it's a beautiful way to look at the plant kingdom, archetypes, and chakras, and the ways that um, they can help guide us through into some major soulful expansion. And it can work as a collective, and it can also work on an individual level. So I don't even know how many cards I'm going to pull today. I did a three card pull last time. I'm just going to wait and see what the cards kind of want to say and see what they want to pull out. But Samantha Orthleap Senses of the Soul. And of course, I have to let you know that this is for entertainment purposes only. None of the information is to replace the advice of a licensed medical practitioner in any way, shape or form. So use the information responsibly and don't don't consume any plant as food, medicine, tea or otherwise. Whoop, there we go. Without talking to a licensed medical practitioner first. Okay, we've got some jumpers, which is always exciting. Always excited to see what the cards pull out here. So I'm just going to shuffle one more time and just see if there's anything else. I think I've pulled the past, the present, and the future right now. And I'm just going to see, is there any more jumpers for us today? And then we'll dive in. So this is just for the first two weeks of March, kind of guiding us along our path and where we might be headed, what the energies might be like, what we can lean into for our own expansion, okay? That's what we're really looking at. What can we lean into for our own expansion? There we are, one more. Okay. All right. So we've got a few beautiful cards here for you. The very first one is lavender. Okay. This is lavender. Amazing. And lavender is uh, for the crown chakra. So if you're familiar with the chakra system, there are many chakras or energy discs uh, throughout our entire body. We usually focus on seven that looks like a holographic uh, straw kind of running up the center of our body that starts at the base of our tailbone and comes to the top of our head, which is the crown chakra. This one here is uh, the crown and that's depicted by the color uh, purple. And lavender is associated with that particular chakra, okay? And the mantra that goes with lavender is I align with my earthly truth and cosmic will. So right now, it's kind of saying <laughs> it's time to tap into our intuition. Uh, lavender sort of saying, are you hearing the universe is speaking to you, okay? Um, we might all be feeling really exhausted right now for various reasons, but what Lavender is asking us is, are we feeling exhausted from trying to constantly push what we desire, from constantly trying to get things our way, from constantly trying to um, create our own agenda as opposed to letting universal will flow through us and then taking action from there? That's what it's really asking, okay? Lavender is uh, coming to us um, to let us know it's time to slow down. It's time to breathe, and it's really about being open to receive where the universe is trying to take us. And for me, I can I can honestly say that I'm I'm really feeling that today of all days. Funny that we're doing this reading today. Um, you know, I woke up this morning with almost that sense of overwhelm where I was trying to lean into wow, something is still off, something still doesn't feel right, and all that does feel right is to try to slow down. Uh, to try to slow down and to try to breathe into it and try to say, see, okay, what am I missing? Uh, what's what's uh, me forcing and what is uh, trying to flow through me? And that's, that's something I have to really sit with right now. Um, a great way to work with that then is lavender, okay? To really uh, lean in and know that if I can surrender and slow down, uh, I can open up to a divine wisdom, which is way <laughs> bigger than anything my limited mind can conceive, okay? So there are bigger and better possibilities if I can just slow down to connect in with them. Our next card here to get us into the month is the prophet, okay? And the prophet here, a beautiful card, is depicted by the color blue. And this is for our throat area, the throat chakra, the fifth chakra, which is almost always depicted by a beautiful royal blue. And the prophet is um, something else super powerful right now, okay? 
I'm a really big fan of Don Miguel Ruiz and the Four Agreements. And what I love about the Four Agreements is that um, there's something you can look to how you're embodying it each and every day. Um, one of those agreements is to speak impeccable. And it's this idea that the words that we use hold so much power. Um, when you study any kind of Wicca or Druid and you talk about spelling, it's the understanding that we have so much power in our word, okay? Now, it's not even just the words we say out loud. It's also in the words that we speak to ourselves. So the prophet comes to us to say, we are creating, co-creating our lives by what we are saying. What words are we choosing to say? What thoughts are we, um, you know, really thinking about in our head? And how are we using them to help bring in and advocate positive change, okay? To do this, we have to be present. We have to be present in every moment. We have to be able to stand in integrity. And we really need to detach from the outcome. That's really hard. Um, and to know that um, if we're standing in integrity and we're choosing to advocate for positive change, then we will be benefiting um, everyone around us. And it can be really overwhelming to try to understand that your voice, your your yeah, your voice is making a difference on a global level, but we're all connected. We really are all connected, which is why some of the greatest change has started with such small movements because it can start with just you. I actually just read this amazing kids book um, and it's by Eva Core uh, or inspired by Eva Core, who's a Holocaust survivor. And it's 12 ways to change the world and it's for kids. And it is some of the most simple things like um, making somebody feel included, um, inviting somebody over, um, oh, uh, sitting with somebody. It's, it's really basic principles for children, but man, they're principles that a, a lot of us may have forgotten are so important even as adults because they're our true power. And they're really all we need, okay? They're really all we need. So it's time to channel um, our, our, our truth. It's time to really stand true in who we are and to try to make choices that are just to benefit everyone around us by using our voice to advocate for positive change, okay? And that brings us to a, an ally. And it's interesting that this comes in right after that because it takes us from here back down to our heart. And Samantha teaches us that the throat is the bridge between the heart and the mind, okay? So borage is the next card to come in. Borage, I love this plant. Hopefully, I'm going to get some planted this year. I really, I really appreciate borage. It's very, very pretty. Um, and borage is heart medicine, okay? That's the heart chakra depicted by the color green. And his mantra is, I transcend emotional pain with courage and tenacity. And so we need tenacity right now. <laughs> there are some big wounds, right? There are some big wounds um, and, and we're heartbroken. Um, many of us are, are processing. We're processing great change, great shifts. And it's a lot for our hearts to take to take on, okay? And so Borge kind of stepping up as an ally and say, notice though, notice your health right now. Is, is This is a big connection for Borge. Um, what is going on in your physical body that's creating a sense of dis-ease and look to its connection to any heartbreak and uh, big feelings you're holding in your heart, okay? Um, this is about forgiving yourself and forgiving others. That is the key to finding the courage and strength to evolve into a new way of being. And evolve feels like a really uh, potent word right now. Um, as, as you sit in and, and you evaluate, um, you know, what you're saying, um, board, the four agreements is it's about not taking things personally, but it's also about just doing your best, okay? And doing your best is, is really going into that heart and uh, allowing yourself to do the best that you can to rise out of any pain 
and shift the way that that pain then is is within you it's like getting underneath those layers of pain so you can have um a, a greater experience and um find your way into a, a new way of living a new way of being and again that connection to eva core which has come up whew, quite a few times for me in the last uh in the last week um is this idea she you know she was a holocaust survivor and she talks about how um forgiveness uh changed her whole life and that's what she taught you know she spent her life then teaching forgiveness uh to children and how forgiveness can shift everything if you haven't heard of homonopono ono that's another amazing technique um to help with forgiveness you don't need to be with anybody else to do it it's about you not about anybody else okay and borge saying this is our key to evolving okay we want to bring playfulness back into some of the darkest moments of our life and um Sometimes uh, healing work is, is really hard, right? Sometimes everything we're going through is really hard. So time to bring some playfulness back in and um, bring yourself back, bring yourself back, bring some light back in to, to that heart energy and uh, feel yourself rise and evolve as, as you let forgiveness guide you past the pain. And the last card says, okay, if you do that work, you do that work with borage, then we find our way into iris, okay? And iris is again here for that fifth chakra. So we go from the heart back up to here, which is great. We're working on this bridge, this bridge between the heart and the mind. We come back here and iris says it's okay. Now we're gonna engage that wild feminine and we're gonna shift out of any stagnation that we're feeling. We're gonna let our creative juices flow. And I get excited when I see um, Iris return because really what it's all about is reminding us that there's beauty and grace in all of us. Uh, for those of you who follow me, I always talk, I'm, I'm grace and I'm grit, okay? And it's good to ebb and flow between the two. And you know, if I'm all grit, I'm too hard and I can be in my masculine too much. Um, and and if, I'm, if I'm all grace and all flow, well, I might not be getting anything done. Um, and that's not an exact analogy, but that gives you some idea. But we need both. And I always see Iris just... Just as that grace okay um really when you're wanting to unblock old patterns uh you're feeling stuck you're feeling limited maybe you're not feeling creative um you're just not even sure you know where to go from here iris has got you covered okay iris comes in to say i'm going to give you just i'm just gonna let you see her again because she's just so beautiful she is just so beautiful, such a beautiful plant with so much feminine energy. And she says, look, we're going to um, remind you that even though you feel like you've got nothing left to give and you're running on empty, I'm here. I'm here to replenish you just like water. Just imagine that, um, you know, that little uh, debris getting cleared so that the water can flow again freely. That's what Iris is bringing back into you. And this is about trying to let creative energy flow again, okay? See where you can um, make space for it. Where can you make space to create and let the creativity flow? Um, that's going to help you, ultimately. That is going to really help you um, know where to go in the next half of the month. Okay, so this is the first half of the month, um, pulling in some lavender again, help us align uh, up here with uh, with basically the truth of earth and, and cosmic will and tune into our intuition, not force our own agendas. The prophet then coming in to say, um, as we start letting some truth flow through us, uh, be very mindful of what we're saying and start advocating for change. This is a time of change. Advocate, use your words to create or co-create uh, the world you want to be a part of, even if it's just you, if it's you and your, uh, your partner, if it's you and your family, what do you want to co-create Borge saying let's rise above uh, the hard work of this and recognize that there might be some dis-ease in our body where we're holding on to pain can we recognize where we can heal our heart energy by letting in some light by not taking everything too too seriously and then iris coming to say let's flow let's get back into flow let's let creativity flow through us so that we can rise and uh, shift out of um feeling stagnant and get back into those incredible beings of creation that we are destined to be here so again, this is the card deck by Senses of the Soul, Samantha Orthley. This is my interpretation of her teachings. And I absolutely love working with her cards. I 
talk a lot about plants and nature and nature spirits and reconnecting with the earth and exploring a life of values in a private membership on Mighty Networks called Running With Wolves. And you can uh, find the details for that down here in the show notes where we'll spend the whole month um, uh, playing with a really great conversation around values, uh, how spirituality turns up and help hold space for evolution, really, where we can all feel into shifts and changes with a determination to use our words to co-create a world we want to see. If you'd like to uh, join us or you're curious about it, we'd love to have you. Details are in the show notes. Whatever you get up to until later in the month, stay curious.